Hi there, this is Lisa and Laura, and we are back with month two, the Canadian Geese Applique. So this is gonna be fun. So you have a sheet, and it's on page eight in your instructions. These are your reversed images. So you don't have to reverse the image when you are appliquing. Also included in the back of your pattern is your template page or your, I call this the positioning page because you really don't have to use it for templates. So you've got this great big page and the method that we use is a uh, raw edge fusible and we like to do a little blanket stitch along the edge, but you're actually very welcome to do whatever applique method that you like. So you can see by my piece here with this duck, this duck is, or duck, I'm sorry, geese. this Canadian geese, this geese is already reversed. So you don't have to reverse trace it for the fusible method. So you are you have this opportunity to use the page on page eight to um, put it on the top of your copy machine, as long as it's inkjet, not uh, laser jet. Don't use laser. But there is a product that has the fusible on the back side and it's paper on the front side and you can actually run it through your copy machine so it eliminates all that tedious tracing. Yeah. So that's what we did with our um, our last several pattern. It, it has really been a fun product to use and I will leave a link somewhere here so that you can find it but um, we're not like getting any kickbacks or anything. This really just is a product that we like. You can find it at your local quilt stores. And it is called, it's a heat and bond easy print light fuse, <laughs> something like that. We don't can't even remember the name of the product, but it is a fun one. So I'll leave the, a picture and a link for it so that you can find it. So I already made my copy and you can see that we have the, the color and the numbers. So what do the numbers mean? The numbers are the order in which you should lay down your pieces. So we start with the background and then we'll move to a foot and then, you know, a fanny and another leg. And so this is the actual, the, the layering of the um, applique. So you uh, are going to cut your pieces according to the directions and these are for your applique pieces. And then you're also told to cut a 13 inch square of the background. Now the background is actually gonna finish when it's all done, stitched and everything, it'll, we'll trim it down to 12 and a half inches because applique has a tendency to shrink your block. So just keep in mind as you're appliquing your, your block that you'll be trimming off maybe a quarter of an inch or less and then you'll also have another quarter of an inch of seam allowance. So when you're putting your duck foot near the bottom, just be sure that you've got at least a half an inch clearance. So you're not gonna get your the foot stuck in a seam. Another thing to note before Lisa takes away this fabric oh, I'm not. is that it is kind of directional. So if you put your raindrops this way, I mean, it's still gonna be a pretty block, but your fabric will be enhanced if you leave it so it looks like the raindrops in the lake. So be sure that you uh, cut your 13 inch square with uh, the horizontal kerplop of those raindrops. Awesome, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna uh, cut our pieces and we'll be right back with the, uh, the next step. Now I've made my first cut, so I'm actually cutting my largest piece out right now. Now I'm using a technique that is called window painting. So I've cut away the inside of my fusible product. This is actually my very first piece and I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch all the way on the inside of that line. That's where I want my fusible product. Now when I fuse this to the back side of my fabric, I still have this line to cut on and I'm only going to have just that quarter of an inch of glue attached to my batik, which helps keep my quilt soft. So I don't want all that product underneath layered up with that batik. So this will help my quilt to remain soft and flexible. All right, we cut apart our pieces. As you can see, we uh, left space all the way around the outside. We call it sloppy cut, but you're just going to leave um, uh, some white fusible on the outside of that black line. And we did a window pane 
which Laura just described, on our larger pieces. It doesn't make sense to do it on the little pieces. It would just drive us crazy. So instead of just slapping it down, fusing it and moving on, we like the black and the white, there really isn't much you could do with that. But with the, the batiks, you have such opportunity to fussy cut. So fussy cut is a term that um, is used when you're using an element of the fabric to enhance your, your quilt. So this, yummy chocolate brown it has this really cool little swirls in it so i mean that could be really fun with on a on a, a wing so you can just play with different areas or different colors for example with with this piece over here this is the ground and it's going to be right up against the the water so i kind of wanted to have that pretty blue area where it would look like it was touching the water but I mean, I could, you know, turn it around and, and use a, a different location if I didn't want the blue. Uh, so you just, you just sort of look at your fabrics, you look at the prints that is in your fabrics and see if there's anything that would enhance your, um, your piece. Like in the light gray, there is all kinds of cool feathers that would really look fun for uh, a fluffy chest. Actually, or, look, this is dotted area. Yeah, this dotted cool? area would be, be really cool, cool on a the... fluffy chest. So mm -hmm. we could we could put his chest right there. So there's lots yeah. of things that um, you can just look at your fabric and see what it might do uh, for your pieces. Okay. All right, we're ready to fuse down. Now the first thing you need to do is read the instructions on your fusible product. Every company has a different type of adhesive and those types of adhesives require more heat, less heat, a little bit of time, a lot of bit of time. If you overheat your fusible product, it will turn it to dust. And that means that you'll be using a glue stick to glue them down instead of your fusible product. So definitely read your instructions. Underfusing is better than overfusing. So uh with this product here it only takes a few seconds i think the instructions are like four or five seconds i barely tap it uh in place and when i know it's nice and adhered uh then i i'm ready to cut it and move on but this product doesn't take much time at all for it to fuse all right um some of our favorite tools when we're using our applique this is lisa's absolute favorite scissors it's called the perfect scissors and I tend to like the ones with the spring loaded because of my arthritis. And so I like the ones, and of course I put my name on it because I don't want Lisa to go home with it. And then with these tiny little pieces, you definitely just have to have a pair of tweezers. Just remember, small scissors for small cuts, big scissors for big cuts. And since these are all little pieces, you're gonna want a nice set of small uh, scissors. All right, let's go fuse these and then we'll come back. All right, we are back on and we are cutting out. Now, as you cut out, hold your scissor hand still and then your hand that is um, holding your fabric will actually be slowly rotating. Now cut on the absolute outside of the line. So you can just see I've got just a little bit of the white and don't be in any hurry to get this process done. Go ahead and take your time and carefully cut out the pieces. Wear your pretty specs. Yep, good lighting and good glasses. And then we're just going to continue to cut out our, there we go, one goose head. Now I'm ready to go to the next piece and I'll keep my pieces over here. Okay, I have my background cut to 13 inches and I've got my pools, my little raindrops in a horizontal position. So the first piece to set on, in place is piece number one and this is your foreground or your ground. So I've already have uh, my fusible. So I'm just gonna peel that piece of fusible off. Oh, be careful with my fusible here. And now I'm gonna fuse it to my background. 
So when you position it, remember that our, our piece is a half, our background is a half an inch larger than needed. So you'll be positioning this slightly less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge. So not quite of a quarter of an inch, but just a little bit. Does that make sense? That way when we, after we're squaring it to 12 and a half inches, you won't be trimming off too, too much, but you should be trimming off just a little bit of the ground. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse this one in place. Okay, I just got back from the ironing board and I fused my background and it's all ready and now we're ready to build our Canadian geese. So this is our Canadian geese template. So if we should put our Canadian geese, we're not, we're not able to see it. So let's get a light tablet. Oops, try to unplug it. There we go. Isn't it cute? It's even pink. So we're gonna put it on the light tablet. And you know what? I, we still can't see it unless we turn the light on. <laughs> yeah, still gonna, we still can't see still it. still can't see it. So how in the world are we gonna build these geese? I don't know, Lisa. How are we going to build these geese? <laughs> so we're not going to build them on the background. So we're going to choose our, our first pretty Canadian geese. And we're going to use a product that it's called a Teflon sheet. And we can see through our paper and through the Teflon sheet. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to build our Canadian geese and fuse directly onto the Teflon sheet. So what pieces do we need here? We're going to need oh, two, three, gracious. four, five, okay, six, here's two. seven, and eight. So we got one little here's foot. Four. Oh, I need a pen to get some of these backs off. Hey, is that a tip you want to share? Sure. I think, but I think it's seven. One. Heck yeah. So in order to peel these the backs off of our, our pieces, I like to just drag a pen across it. And then that okay, helps. Now I need his head. Get the paper off. Here's his there we head, go. and then I need eight. Here's so eight. I got his first foot All in right. place. I need number four. Here's his other foot. Do you see how I'm just sort of building it right on top of the paper. Okay, the next piece is number three. I'm peeling number three right now. Oh, I got number three. Oh, I'm peeling five then. And my fingernails are so short. I think right, I was thinking five. this piece was a chest and not a tail, but I still like the, the colors. So we got those little fanny in here. Oops, this is why the tweezers are such a good idea. And then you've got piece number five. That's his pretty chest. Oh, and the dots look great on his chest. And then you've got six. Goes on top of number five. I'm kind of guessing that one. <laughs> Where did our tweezers go? Oh, right here. Oh. Why are we using our thick little fingers here? Okay, and then the last piece. Oh. Oops. Do we have an iron? We have an iron. Our last piece to put down is our, our pretty, oops, we lost power. Okay. We have an iron, but he's not hot because I don't have an outlet for him. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we've got him all looking gorgeous. Oh my gosh, what a pretty bird. So we have him and uh, he looks great to me. I don't see where he needs to be adjusted any. Turn it back on. Oh, thank you. There we go. So I like it. So what I like to do is I, I like to lay a wool mat We'll just uh, slide the wool mat underneath the paper. And then I'll use the iron and I'll heat set 
the uh, the Canadian geese right to the Teflon. Okay, I think he's heat set low. So I'm gonna let him cool off a second. And then we'll peel them up to place on the background. It's so hard to be patient. I know, let's not be patient. And let's we move on to the next duck, yep. the geese. The next geese. Okay, so our next geese, let's uh, get that light tablet turned back on. Yeah. You are stepping on the cord, ma'am. Sorry. There we go. There we go. So our next Canadian geese, I'm going to move this Canadian geese down a bit. Now, obviously, I don't have to line up the two geese because he's going to be peeled up. And so I can build this other Canadian geese that's on the water. And uh, then I we can build the, the third one just Yay. the same. So what are we starting with? We're going to start with i don't know what happens in my glasses this would be a lot easier if i wore my glasses are these yours <laughs> <laughs> okay so we need number 9 10 11 12 and 13. i'm not going to put the tiny little water pieces on until we're on the background right because they'll just floating around yeah here. here's here's nine okay so i'm going to put this little water piece on the wool mat so i don't lose them so easy to misplace. By the way, if you're not doing fusible, these itty bitty water pieces, just do a satin stitch, an embroidery stitch. Um, or if you just prefer embroidery uh, anyway, because these tiny pieces can drive you cray cray. And believe me, I've lost so many of the little tiny pieces and they were just right there. Where'd they go? <laughs> Bird feet are the worst, but it is these little pieces that really just lend to its delicate look of the applique. Well, and it lends to the, um, so, you know, the, the actual look, you know, they look like real Canadian geese, not so much a cartoon. Uh, but I think this number 10 has to go on before I put that pretty neck on. Oh, I just was putting them over there. Okay. Playing. They are noisy birds, that's for certain. We wake up to them every morning. There are alarm clock. Oh, this guy goes to this way. How many pieces do we need? We are down to 13. Oh, I think this is 13. That would be it. Is this guy cool enough yet? Oh, he's beautiful. All right, let me make any adjustments. I heard that some, um, Light tablets, they're making heat resistant. Ours oh. is not heat resistant. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can actually press with an iron directly onto the glass. Well, not on this Not on this one. one. <laughs> this one's plastic. All yeah. right, so let me move the pieces of our last one off of our tablet. We'll our, be um, buying a new light tablet. Wool mat. All right, so we're ready for the last bird. Wait, the last bird? We could just scoot on and go ahead and No, nah, let's on. press him down because I have a feeling I'll knock that guy loose if I move him around too okay, much. Okay, so I'm going to slide our little mat back under. Okay, did he move? Still looks pretty good to me. So let's fuse him in place. Okay. probably plunked that down too hard. I wasn't looking through my glasses right. <laughs> or my glasses right. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Mine are stronger than yours. <laughs> no, you look pretty good. Okay. okay. Is that the is... blind leading the dumb? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So let's see if this is beginning Here, to... Here, let's move you back oh, to the center of the camera. He's cool enough. I can... You want to try pulling him up now? Yeah. Okay, I just like rolling the Teflon to, to get the edges up. So he just peels off in one piece. And get his little dancy legs up. Give me that little pin. Okay, I think I'm 
tighten back up. Oops, I think I just knocked the other goose right into the floor. Oh, fiddle. This is when I lose pieces. <laughs> All right, so uh, this guy's ready to fly away. He looks awesome. Oh, good. Okay, I'm going to set him over on our background piece just to hang out until we're ready to, uh, okay. This guy's cool them. enough. I'm ready to peel this guy really? up too. Really, ready to? Yeah, okay. yeah. I want to move this iron off this mat. And the nice thing is this fusible product doesn't stick to the Teflon sheet. So it's still on the back of my goose. But our goose is now all oh, put together. Wow. Look how pretty he is. I don't know all right, he's not in the right spot yet, but... Um, do you want to build the last goose, or shall we uh, go ahead and place well, these guys? Let's just position these guys. I think they, um, I think they've got the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's a little bit of a guessing game because you can't see through the, the. Um, but if we fold, we know where our center is, and then from there we can help place where it, um, our geese are going to go. So if we do a quick little fold on our fabric as well just a finger fold. Now I have a reference point. And so if I go to the center, there we go. I know that my center is right here. And then looking at my little diagram, oh, our goose see, is cooked. I have, <laughs> did you cook the goose? There we go. So that really is pretty much the center. So we are ready to um, scoot him down. There we go. Let's see. I think he can move over just a little bit more. Does that look good? All right. And how's that guy in the bottom? He looks really good. This guy looks pretty good. Put his little head up just a smidge. He's ready for his white water. Should we do the white water pieces? Sure. But I like to do the teeny tiny pieces when I'm ready to fuse. This one still has the paper on the back. Oh, lovely. This one does not. What is wrong with this designer? She does all these tiny <laughs> little pieces. <laughs> you don't have to send me hate mail, I know. <laughs> That's 14. Alrighty. But the results are awesome. Okay, what other piece am I missing? Um, this piece here. I think that's probably this one. We've cut away his, um, no, that one's 22. We need, uh, what, 15? We need 15. I'm looking, it's one of these, right? Mm-hmm. So this one's 22, Lisa. Who wants that one? 15. He's like over here, see? He goes up here with the other duck. Yeah, or geese. Goose. Mm-hmm. Take these pieces over here. Or is he a male duck? Is he the gander? Ooh. I don't know. They all, they all look the same to me. I'm sure there's a way to tell. Alrighty. So that one will go right about there. And are we happy? Uh, let's get our block straight to make sure my. My goose isn't swimming downhill. He does look like he's going slightly downhill. Anything else? No, I actually think he looks pretty good. Although, is this 23 or is this 14? Oh, well, I didn't check, so I was guessing. Give me that other piece. It still has paper on it. Yep. This is the one we want. Now, honestly, the pieces were so similar, it really wouldn't have mattered, but. Okay, that looks really good. Let's do you want press to it. change anything or? No, I like it a lot. Okay, awesome. Let's uh, fuse him in place. Did the iron get turned back on? I don't know. Oh, I guess not. Well, this is a comedy of errors. Let's. Okay, wait till he gets hot this time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. This is going to be a 20-minute long video. All right. I think that's 
looking pretty awesome. Okay. Okay, that'll take a second to heat up. All right, so while that iron is heating up, I'm going to talk really fast about my next step. And I'm going to do a little stitch all the way around the edge of my applique pieces. Now, as you can see here, this is just a scrap piece from where I had cut out the geese. No need to let it go to waste. I did a straight stitch. Then I did the traditional blanket stitch. And then I thought, you know what? What about a zigzag? So I did a little zigzag stitch. I started out too big and then it got smaller. Well, too far apart. And then I did a little smaller. I like this one. So I'm going to do this applique stitch all the way around my pieces in coordinating colors. And I wrote down my 1.5 width for my zigzag stitch. And then I'm at a 1.0 stitch length. Now I'll turn the machine off and I'll forget what I did. So I'm gonna have to write that down or I will forget. Or So um, now I'm ready to fuse this. I think the iron is hot and we'll be ready to sew after we get that third goose on there. All right. These pieces are so small that you definitely want to have a small stitch. Just his head left. I know this fusible right, product is, is supposed to be forever and ever, and you really don't have to top stitch, but... I've had pieces come loose before, so top stitching is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Besides, it makes a pretty finish. Um, as a long armor, I prefer to have them top stitched because I can do a stitch in the ditch along the outside edge of the applique. If it's not been top stitched, then I um, have to stitch through the applique in order to secure it. But sometimes, depending on the fusible product, um, the needles are so big um, I leave big holes in the applique stitch, so I would prefer not to be stitching on my applique okay. with the long arm. Well, this guy is beautiful, so let's put together our last goose, and then we'll finish this block up. But I'm pretty sure you guys have got the technique now, so we'll see you in the next video. Awesome!